this system coming through and then there's actually more energy that's going to enhance our storms in the south, at least into the southeast, I should say. So there's your another low that develops and that's going to be tossing moisture tomorrow here into the Carolinas. That kind of moves north and east, but just skirts the coast here. So I don't think it'll be too terrible for us. If you can remember, we still have this last system that's just kind of lingering out there. And this is what we call a synoptic scale system. It's very large. You can see the low pressure. You have the warm fronts, the cold fronts, a very large system. And they typically last, I would say, more than several hours, usually a few days. These are large, you know, coastal storms or ones that go from east to west. That's a really big one. Then when we're talking about our thunderstorms, this is more of a mesoscale system, a much smaller scale, and that can span from tens to hundreds of miles, and the weather can last an hour to a day. An example would be you know, a squall line that you have coming through or perhaps a supercell that produces a tornado. So what we have going on in the south is you're going to have the synoptic scale system, the widespread system giving us some gusty winds, and also those thunderstorms. Within those thunderstorms, you'll have some mesoscale winds. So here is that system. There's your new load developing from energy that comes in from the west. That keeps us wet here in the southeast coast. But then as we head into the weekend, we'll see some improving conditions there. The possibility of flooding does exist. It looks like the heaviest rain will be into North Carolina with that three to five inches. And notice it's Greenville over towards Raleigh. Of course, we've got got UNC, Duke. We're both still in it, right? UNC and Duke, Jordan? So. Yeah, I think so. I got to look at my bracket. Dance. Yeah. yeah, I believe so. Well, the Twin Cities are digging down in Jackson, Mississippi Metro after a possible tornado. We are tracking severe weather on this Tuesday, the 26th of March at America's Morning Headquarters. City crews have been out in Clinton overnight trying to clear roads ahead of the morning commute. The line of powerful, powerful storms with heavy rain is pushing into the southeast now, and the threat is far from over. So let's get right to Jordan to see where we could see more scenes like this later today, Jordan. Well, I hope not, but yeah, we've got... And that wind is gnarly there, That's of course. That's nasty. That's up here. Here is uh, Mobile for you, and then this is a Panhandle of Florida, Pensacola, Panama City Beach, up into the state capital. The rest of Florida is looking sunny with our temperatures into the 80s for the day today. But look at those winds. You know, you can see them pretty rough here. If you're thinking about going out on a boat, they'll be like, if you haven't ever been on a boat when it's rough like that, your back hurts when you get back in. Jim knows. He just did it uh, not too long ago, I feel yes. like. Yeah. When it was down in the Keys. Oh, your But back. it wasn't bad. That was the bow of the boat hitting the water. There's like a specific <laughs> sound that it makes. Anyhow, um, if you are boating, be careful. Rip currents are high as well. If you're doing any swimming, the same on the west coast and east coast of Florida. And there is our big weather maker that we've been talking about that caused that reported tornado yesterday and some strong gusty winds. Storms into the panhandle could turn severe as we go through the day today. And notice as we head into tomorrow morning, we'll see some showers there, Gainesville, Jacksonville, and then all of this will not overtake the entire state, but you'll see a better chance of some showers here into Florida. Florida. Two to three inches of rain. Here is our Thursday forecast. Temperatures a little bit cooler with some of that cloud cover and rain that's come through for us. Friday, boom, right back to the good stuff here. That is the sunshine in our highs in the upper 70s if you're in South Florida and the low 70s here if you're in Jack's along the first coast. Saturday, Jim, another beautiful one if you will be doing anything outside this weekend. Yeah, we get right. America's Morning Headquarters is with you all morning long. Jen Carfagno, Alex Walls are here coming up at 9. What are you guys going to be talking about? The bridge, of course, which is just yes. massive. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the weather conditions, of course, for the recovery going on yeah. there. We're also going to be tracking today's storms, as you guys were talking about, along with Winter Storm Sawyer and the next round of messy weather coming into the West. Plus, folks, try fun song. Welcome back into Pattern Your Home for the latest news in climate change and sustainability. I'm Steph Abrams. And I'm Jordan Steele. We're going to jump right into today's hot topics. And one of the hottest live feeds on the internet is a little fishy feed. It's a chance for you to virtually ring a bell. Ding dong. You can ring my bell. You can do that. It's right now. It's maxed out right now. It's so, so popular right so now can't even that get on the it show is maxed you? out. You have to wait for somebody to get off. To get off. Refresh, so you can refresh, get on. refresh, you refresh, can do refresh, it. refresh. <laughs> <laughs> just to try to get on. And you know what would be annoying is if you're the lock master, whatever it's called. And what if they're just messing of with them too? Just buzz, buzz, so buzz. So he's got to keep an eye on it also. I feel like now everyone has those doorbell cameras where it rings and then it can pop up on your phone yeah. and you can talk to the person yeah. that's out there or I've whatever. Got the old school doorbell. 
I disabled What's it. What's an or you disabled your doorbell? Oh yeah. Why? Doesn't even to sleep. The dogs start barking. I'm like, gosh dang. And then I get somebody, I'm like, you know what? Disable that thing. If they need me, they'll knock on the door. But you might not hear it if you're maybe, um, well, you know, then, upstairs great. or something. Then I don't have to answer the door. Well, I get upset <laughs> that a package is delivered and they don't ring my doorbell, but I get why, because kids are sleeping and everything. Yeah. But half the time it could be sitting out there for days and I have no idea if I don't go out the front door. Well then, <laughs> you know, go out the front door. That's true. All right. Let's go on to hot topic number two. <laughs> Set down that salad and listen up. The dubious Dirty Dozen list is out. The 12 fruits and veggies with the highest concentrations of pesticides. It's so you have to keep that in mind. To round out the list, peaches, pears, covered with a, a rind. So that would no, be no. They aren't. Nectarines just bite into it. It's like it's a peach without oh. the fuzz. Oh, you're right. What am I thinking? Of? I don't know. I was know, thinking but... of a cutie, like a little orange. Right. So Sorry. things with the rind. One are thing you're I want to say off. though, I did see a thing on her favorite sh show or app, TikTok or whatever it is. Okay. I've seen and that. And let it sit for like 10 minutes. Yeah, and when it's done, the water is amazingly dark yeah. and ominous. You're How like, that was in my fruit. Have you eaten a piece of fruit and you can kind of taste the taste pesticides? It. And, like, and, and then... you, Miss, I don't. I don't put any of my produce in a bag when I shop. I just put it right on the conveyor belt. I'm like, really? And then you just wash it. And <laughs> well, it has all the pesticides it. on it. What's a little dirt from the conveyor belt? I guess you're right. I guess you're <laughs> right. Okay, next hot topic here. Researchers in England say they've discovered fossils from the earliest known forest on the planet. Mm. You got to check 390 million years ago. Push a and button. See what and it would look see like. what it would look like. It would be pretty awesome, It actually. would be pretty cool. Yeah. All right, well, spring can have you wanting to get into the out there. And it's a sniffling, sneezing season, also known known as allergy season. Yeah. This year, that misery started early. Yeah, it did. Both of your chemicals to chat about this. A chew a chew. <laughs> Heather, <laughs> so nice for you to be with us. And you do a lot of work in the field of environmental justice. So how does air pollen factor into that? Aren't we all exposed to the same trees, the same grass? Well, sort of, but not exactly. And you're absolutely overlap. By the way, thanks for the callback on the mice. I'd finally forgotten about them, but now they're fresh Back in my up. mind again. Yep. Thanks for that, Heather. So it seems like the high pollen overlap with the poor air quality. How much do both of these have to do with equity and, you know, the equity problems that we have? Um, you plant trees to help clean the air, but then the trees are creating all of this. I would imagine cities have less of that tree coverage than outside the city. Tony, we always love having you on. Thank you so much for your perspective on this. Reminder of what we were talking about. I mean, and now you show. just brought it up again. All right, let's Between go ahead and get a weather update from Julie. I will never let that down. But remember that one time we had that segment oh on? Oh, gosh. <laughs>